Blockchain is a process that aggregates two or more Ethernet ports of the same type to one logical port. It increases the link bandwidth and improves link reliability using a link backup mechanism. To implement this feature, the interconnected devices on both link ends are required to support Ethernet link aggregation. The following details how to configure and implement Ethernet link aggregation on access devices. In an IP network, access devices are used to provide VoIP, IPTV, and HSI services for home and business users. In the downstream direction, the access devices provide HDSL access modes for traditional broadband users and also provides the FTTX access for users who require higher bandwidth. In the upstream direction, the user service traffic is forwarded to the upper layer IP network through upstream ports on the access devices. As the internet and streaming media services become more and more popular, the number of broadband users and the required bandwidth increase greatly. In this case, network congestion occurs occasionally due to bandwidth insufficiency on uplinks of the access devices. This affects user experience. Furthermore, users are posing high requirements on network stability. If uplinks of the access devices are not protected, services will be interrupted once a fault occurs. This seriously impairs user experience. Ethernet link aggregation can be deployed on access devices to solve these issues. Without a board upgrade or device replacement, Ethernet link aggregation expands the available link bandwidth to avoid network congestion and protects the links. All these benefits translate into higher competitiveness for carriers. The access devices support two Ethernet link aggregation modes, manual aggregation and LACP aggregation. In manual aggregation, the devices on both link ends will not run the LACP protocol. In LACP aggregation, the devices will run the LACP protocol, so the LACP aggregation mode controls aggregation groups in a more accurate and effective way. Next. We'll introduce to you the applications of these two aggregation modes. Manual aggregation is recommended in the following scenarios. Scenario 1. The aggregation group is configured on the upstream ports of the access device and the upper layer device does not support LACP. Scenario 2. The access device functions as a convergence node for multiple lower layer devices and the aggregation group is configured on the downstream cascading ports of the access device. In scenario 2, if LACP aggregation is used, the devices on both link ends will frequently exchange protocol packets, resulting in high CPU usage. Therefore, manual aggregation is recommended now, we'll use the upstream port aggregation of the access device as an example to describe how to configure manual aggregation. Configure an aggregation group for each device on both link ends. The following configuration is performed on the access device. First, select ports for the aggregation group, such as two ports on slot 19 and one port on slot 20. Second. Select a packet transmission mode, for example, ingress. You do not need to configure the aggregation mode because it is devoted to manual aggregation. Perform similar configuration on the upper layer device. After such configurations, the two interconnected devices will transmit packets through the links. If a link fails when the devices are running, the access device performs calculation again according to the current available links in the aggregation group and transmit packets through the available links to ensure that user services are not affected. After the faulty link recovers, the access device restores the link, performs calculation again according to all the available links in the group 
and transmit packets through the links again. If the upper layer device supports LACP and the links are required to work in load sharing or active standby mode, LACP aggregation is recommended. In LACP aggregation, the load sharing mode applies when the access device is single homed to an upper layer device, while the active standby mode applies when the access device is dual homed to two upper layer devices. In the dual homing scenario, uplinks are protected at equipment level at the convergence layer. Therefore, dual homing provides better protection than single homing. Load sharing in LACP aggregation is configured in a similar way with that in manual aggregation. Next, we'll describe how to configure LACP aggregation with active standby mode. First. Configure an aggregation group for each device on both link ends. The following uses the access device as an example. Select ports for the aggregation group, such as two ports on slot 19 and two ports on slot 20. Select a packet transmission mode, for example, ingress. Set the aggregation mode to static aggregation, that is, set parameter work mode to LACP static. Second. Configure the system priority of the access device. Note that the system priority of the access device must be higher than the system priorities of the two upper layer devices. For example, if the system priority of the access device is set to 1, the system priorities of the upper layer devices should be 2 and 3, because a smaller value indicates a higher priority. After such configurations, the access device with the highest priority is selected as the actor among the interconnected devices. The actor will determine the active upper layer device according to priorities of the ports on the access device. For example, priority 1, 2, 3, or 4. A smaller value also indicates a higher priority. After the devices on both link ends are configured, Two interconnected devices will transmit packets through the links. The aggregation group of the active upper layer device carries services, while the links in the aggregation group of the standby upper layer device are blocked and do not carry services. If a link fails when the devices are running, the access device compares the link bandwidth of the two upper layer devices and selects the upper layer device with a higher bandwidth as the new active device to ensure that the user services are not affected. After the faulty link recovers, and if priority preemption has not been enabled for the links of the access device, the current working aggregation group remains unchanged, and services are not switched to the original aggregation group. If priority preemption has been enabled, for the links of the access device, the access device restores the link and switches services to the original aggregation group. Whether Ethernet ports can be configured as an aggregation group and which aggregation mode is to be used depends on the board type, port type, and actual networking. For more information, see Ethernet link aggregation in the MA560 